Once you have finished your book and you are ready to embark on the publishing journey, whether you like it or not, one step you're going to have to take is figuring out how to pitch your book. This goes for whether you are planning to traditionally publish, in which case you are going to have to pitch your book to literary agents via your query letter, or if you are going the self-publishing route, you're ultimately gonna have to figure out how to pitch your book so that readers wanna buy it. But I totally understand that pitching can feel unnatural, it can feel awkward, especially if marketing, sales, and advertising do not come naturally to you. It can feel like a chore, and it can feel impossible to distill your complex, layered story into a succinct pitch. It can be even hard for you to figure out what your story is even about, because to you it's about so many different things, right? So how do you nail it down? Despite how hard it is, pitching your novel can make or break your book's success. Even if you have written the best book ever, if there isn't a pitch that draws someone in and makes them want to read it, it's unlikely going to find any readers at all. So because pitching is so important, Today, I wanna to go over some practical tips for how to successfully pitch your novel so that literary agents, publishers, or readers get excited about it, as excited as you are to bring it to them. If you are anywhere along the book writing or publishing journey, I recommend subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Every week, I either offer publishing tips like this one, or I talk about tactical ways to strengthen your manuscript itself. So I'd love to have you around for all of that. If you do have a work in progress, head down into the description below and grab my free story self-assessment resource. It is going to help you spot the pain points and the strong points in your work in progress so that you can take an editorial eye to it and bring it to the next level on the next draft. That is also going to sign you up for my newsletter where I provide exclusive tips and insights that are not available anywhere else on my channel, so you do not wanna miss out on any of that. Let's dive in to my first tip for pitching your novel, which is to identify the hook. Every book has a hook, even if you are convinced yours does not. Even if you didn't write your book with a specific hook in mind, it does have one somewhere in there. The hook is the element that makes a literary agent or a reader go, oh my God, I have to read that. Now you might come back and say, or you might be thinking right now, well, it's impossible for me to summarize what my book is about in a one-line pitch or a one-line hook. How am I supposed to do that? Well, it is not about summarizing your entire book in one sentence or one line. However, the hook can be just one sentence or one line. Because remember, the hook is not about describing all of your novel's themes. It is not about summarizing everything that happens in your book. It's not even about describing all the elements of your plot. To find your hook, Think about what your story offers that is totally unique. Perhaps that's the world that you've crafted, or perhaps it's the specific protagonist's struggles. What is different about your story and what is going to make readers want to read it? Your hook should encapsulate the premise or the essential idea or inciting element of your plot so that the reader gets some sense of what to expect from it. Often when crafting your hook, it can also be helpful to think about contrasting elements in your story, forces that are opposing and are working against one another, because that's ultimately going to be where the intrigue lies. So for instance, a hook line could be, a composer finishing the score for a blockbuster film suddenly loses their hearing. That's it. We don't know anything else about the story, but that is still an intriguing hook that will likely make some readers want to understand what goes on in that story. My next tip for crafting your pitch is to lead with character. Anywhere you're pitching your novel, whether that is in your query letter to literary agents or in the blurb you are posting online when you self-publish your book and are describing it, I strongly recommend leading with your protagonist or protagonists, which means describing them and the struggle that they are facing. This is because most readers ultimately want to connect emotionally with the human element of your story. They want to understand and get invested in the people who populate your story. Because even if you have a compelling plot, if readers aren't connecting with or caring about your characters, it's unlikely they are actually going to finish it. So in your pitch, make us care about your main character or characters. Try to articulate what they are trying to achieve and what is stopping them from achieving it. Because if you orient us to their goals, we're going to understand them on some level, and then you're going to introduce a conflict element 
by telling us what is getting in the way of them achieving their goals. So let's talk about the prior example about the composer who is trying to finish the score but then loses their hearing. This pitch would be so much less effective if you just said something like, production for a blockbuster film stops when a composer suffers an injury. So do you see how leading with the protagonist, with the composer's journey and with the composer's struggles makes that pitch for the same book so much more compelling? Because we are invested in seeing what happens to the composer. So for this reason, whenever you are putting together the plot blurb portion of your query letter, or the book description that goes online if you are self-publishing. Start it with a description of your protagonist. So for the composer story, that could look something like, struggling composer Ben Smith has one more shot to make his career work or else he's going to quit for good. Giving us a snapshot of the state of being for your protagonist is going to immediately give us that human element to connect with, which ultimately is going to translate into a stronger pitch. Because as we know, emotions move us to act. If we feel connected to this character, we are interested in the struggle you're laying out, we're gonna be more likely to wanna read that book. My next tip for pitching your novel is to describe the main conflict. Your pitch should always, always, always describe the main conflict of your plot. Because if you provide just a static description of the characters or the setting, and that's the entirety of your pitch, it is unlikely to pique a literary agent or a reader's interest. Because you have to give us a taste of what we are reading for. What is the journey that's going to unravel? What is the main issue the characters are grappling with? We need that point of tension and intrigue because that is what is going to create suspense which is what's going to inspire us to keep going and see what happens in the story. So again, going to the composer example, a poor pitch would be something like, a struggling composer works on a blockbuster film. You've taken out the conflict element entirely, and so that's not really something that anyone's going to find interesting to read. It doesn't sound exciting. So wherever you are pitching your book, it is essential to highlight the main conflict. To identify and articulate the main conflict of your plot, Sometimes it can be helpful to think about it in terms of a rhetorical question. So again, going back to this composer story, that could look something like, will Ben figure out how to continue to write music or will he have to give up his passion forever? The reason why the rhetorical question works well to present the conflict is because it forces you to lay out different options for how the story could play out, which also helps establish the stakes we don't want Ben to have to give up his passion forever, right? So it makes us intrigued to see what happens in the story and see which way the conflict will go. My next tip for pitching your novel is to find relevant comps. I know comparable titles are the bane of every writer's existence, especially those who are seeking traditional publishing. It might feel unnatural or unrealistic to compare your story to others, or perhaps you simply just don't have a lot of time to read recently published books and therefore you're struggling to come up with any comp titles at all. Maybe you don't even know where to start with finding comp titles. But the reason I continually bring up comparable titles and the reason you will see them discussed so often, especially in the traditional publishing space, is because they can be really, really helpful for pitching your book. And this goes for self-publishing as well. That's because comparable titles helps a literary agent or a potential reader understand what to expect from your story and what other audiences it would appeal to. Comps also do double duty because if a literary agent or a reader is a big fan of one of the comps that you come up with, they're immediately going to be that much more interested in reading the story. So it can be a really powerful pitch element. So when pitching your book, the way that I recommend incorporating comps is by saying something like, my story is X meets Y. That alleviates the need for you to get hung up on finding one specific perfect comp. There's not gonna be any perfect comp out there, I promise. Your book is unique for a reason. So by thinking about it instead as X meets Y, then you can think about it in terms of what two books or one book and one movie or one TV show, you can use a movie or a TV show as one comp, what two stories blended create something like my story? One could have a similar setting, while the other could have a similar genre or a similar protagonist. So do some brainstorming, maybe even ask friends if there are any other stories or TV shows or movies that your story reminds them of, and see if you can create that 
blended comps presentation. I have a whole other video that goes into more specifics about finding comps and what you should look for, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. My final tip for pitching your novel is to keep it high level. You need to accept the fact that you are simply not going to be able to express all the nuances and layers of your story in your pitch, and you're not supposed to. Oftentimes in a pitch, you're going to have to cut out things like the novel's themes or the intended takeaways you have. You're likely not gonna be able to talk about all the subplots or secondary characters, but that is totally okay. Understand that a literary agent or a reader is going to understand that the pitch is high level and that your story is obviously much more complex than just a one-line pitch. Remember, the function of the pitch is just to pique their interest. It is not supposed to reflect the entire scope of the story. It is not going to be able to. So if you're struggling to figure out what to present in your pitch and what to cut or leave out, what you can do is ask a friend or someone else who has read your book to summarize it for you and see what they come up with because it might not be what you come up with on your own. For instance, what they see as the main plot conflict or the main unique element of your story might not be what you thought. And that can then help you craft a distinct pitch. Also ask them to identify one thing about your book that was different than any other book they've read and see if you can craft a pitch around that. Because again, that goes back to the first point about finding your hook and what makes your story distinct and what makes readers want to read it. I hope this helped you feel more confident going out there and pitching your book, whether to literary agents or to readers directly. I know it can be really hard and nerve wracking to pitch your book, but I promise you have it in you. Also feel free to leave your pitch in the comments here. I would love to hear what you're working on and I'd love to see any of these pitching tips in action. If you're looking for some more tips for how to write a query letter specifically, if you're pursuing traditional publishing, I go through my entire query letter breakdown in another video, so definitely check that out. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget that free resource waiting for you in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.